Welcome back nerd squad. We continue to hear your call for more discussion surrounding the exploration of mental illness in comics. And so we are answering it. Today we will be counting down the top 10 superheroes with mental illness part 2. And understandably many superheroes suffer from a variety of different mental illnesses. So if there is someone I still haven't talked about that wasn't on part 1 or 2, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I want to hear more about the superheroes who you feel struggle the most with their illness and in some some cases illnesses plural. On the last list we talked about more than one superhero who actually suffered from dissociative personality disorder or multiple personality disorder as some people know it. Oftentimes with superheroes there is a pattern and because superheroes are striving for similar things or have similar origins, many heroes tend to suffer from the same illnesses. What types of mental illnesses do you think most superheroes share and struggle with the most? Let me know in the comments below. I personally struggle with anxiety a lot and I would love to see that explored more in the comments. Seeing superheroes deal with real world illnesses or issues makes them come alive and makes them more relatable. It also helps those struggling to feel like they're not alone. And feeling like you have company can often be super helpful when you are struggling with mental illness and often feel isolated. Okay, let's get counting. Number 10. Wonder Woman. After realizing that her time spent in Themyscira was all an illusion and that none of it was real in the 2016 New 52 comic series Wonder Woman, Diana has a psychotic break. She has lost what appears to be years in this illusion. Her mind just snaps and she goes into an almost catatonic state. As such Steve Trevor decides he must continue on without Diana and has her committed at Nightingale Hospital. Unfortunately he seems to forget to mention that she is Wonder Woman. Call it forgetfulness, protecting her secret identity or just straight up weird cruelty from Steve. Regardless this seems to be a huge mistake. An interesting thing that Wonder Woman's psychotic break allows us to explore is how awful misdiagnosis can be when it comes to a mental illness. During her stay at the mental institution, instead of being treated for her PTSD regarding the revelation she experienced, she is instead treated for her delusion that she is Wonder Woman. Which is more harmful than helpful because she actually is Wonder Woman. Don't worry though, she ends up actually coming to when Fernandan the Minotaur comes to see her and she just ends up just checking herself out. Unfortunately there are no consequences for those who mistreated Diana in the comics so that's pretty terrible. I think in terms of mental illness Wonder Woman would simply encourage you to listen to those who suffer and come to you rather than judge them. We have to fight for those who can't fight for themselves after all. Number 9 Punisher Frank Castle is more of an anti-hero than superhero and he isn't powered but if it wasn't for his trauma he actually probably wouldn't be a hero at all. After the death of his family that resulted from a wrong place wrong time scenario, Castle does everything in his power to avenge the ones he's lost. He somehow managed to survive the event but none of the other members of his family did. Too bad Thanos wasn't the one who wiped out his family, if that had happened Mentor might have been able to try and help him out at least, like with Drax and Moondragon. Beyond just avenging his dead family, the Punisher also seeks vengeance for others as well, violent and brutal vengeance. He does his best to protect innocents while punishing those he deems guilty. While many criticize the depiction of the Punisher, calling it a glorification of violence, there's really more going on. Where Punisher can cause idolization of brutal violence and capital punishment, he also stands to serve as a reminder for what it is like to come home from violence and war and what that can do to someone's psyche. How does one adjust when violence is all you've known for such a long time? How do people feel when they come back from the war? This is real world stuff guys, soldiers having severe PTSD. Number 8 Rorschach when many people think of mental illness they think of Rorschach from Watchmen. I get it, dude is covered in ink blots and gets his name from the Rorschach test which is used to help diagnose patients through analyzing the perception of what they see within ink blot images. This test can also be used to help break down a persons thought process and potentially diagnose thought disorders. In Rorschach's case the mask was just what he decided to create, though it does seem to symbolize a mental instability for his character. Walter Kovacs was abused by his mother as a child and this combined with his psychotic break upon discovering the murdered corpse of Blair Roche and way in which her body was desecrated, chopped up and fed to the murderer's dogs, Rorschach most likely suffers from paranoid personality disorder embodied in the way he views the world as being mostly immoral and his suspiciousness of others. Number 7 Daredevil In the comments for part 1 a lot of you were saying that comics and fiction are often wildly inaccurate when it comes to depicting mental illness and treatment. And while I would sometimes agree with that statement, it's not always the case. If you want to read a comic that articulates relatively accurately what it's like to 
to suffer from a mental illness, look to Matt Murdock's struggle with depression. In Daredevil Volume 5 Issue 10, the first few pages allow Matt to beautifully describe what it is like to feel depressed. As someone who has struggled with depression anyways, I know I personally agree with it. Daredevil articulates that he has always struggled with depression, but is usually pretty good at dealing with it. He often does not let it overwhelm him. However, after his emotions are manipulated by the Purple Man's children, he is left paralyzed from his depression. His depression is so severe in this issue that he can't even follow the Purple Man's commands. It's so powerful it allows him to refuse Kilgrave's influence. That's some next level depression. Number 6. The Comedian Edward Blake is a reckless man, one who shows little regard for other people, and one who does not even seem to feel affected by other people. He kills mercilessly, killing a woman point blank for attacking him after he got her pregnant. He seems to feel no remorse when it comes to the way he treats people. He catches Silk Spectre changing after a photo shoot with his fellow Minuteman and tries to rape her only to be stopped by Hooded Justice. He doesn't even apologize, he simply threatens the Hooded Justice for attacking him and stopping him. Ultimately, the comedian displays so sociopathic tendencies, which is very scary in a superhero to have such blatant disregard for others. He's on the boys level of potentially being a really bad superhero. Number 5. Jessica Jones The trauma of Jessica Jones is astounding and also quite well explored in her Netflix show. Jessica suffers from PTSD after being kidnapped by Kilgrave and manipulated by him. She is a survivor of rape and was a victim of abuse. Not only does her show deal with those issues, it also deals with the fear and reluctance to leave that people often feel when they are being abused or being held captive. She makes hope repeat over and over again in season 1 that it is not her fault. Often victims of assault feel as though they must somehow be to blame. Part of this is due to guilt and part of this problem stems from desperately wanting to have some kind of control over or find a rationale behind what happened to you. Number 4. Crazy Jane Jane Morris is actually Kay Chalice who at one point was Miranda. She in fact has over 30 different personalities who each have their own unique powers. Kay Chalice was a victim of assault. She was sexually abused by her father when she was just a little girl. And as such, eventually withdrew into another personality, Miranda. After she was a victim of rape while in her Miranda persona, geez, this triggered a psychotic break. Not unsurprisingly, which led to even more personalities and her being institutionalized. Jane suffers from a disassociative identity disorder, which was also suffered by Moon Knight, Legion, Sentry, and potentially Batman from the part one of this video that I did. And obviously, there are also many, many other superheroes that often suffer from DID. Number three, Hulk and Bruce Banner. These two both have their issues. Hulk obviously deals with anger issues and, in fact, is a good symbolic representation of what it can feel like for those who struggle with anger while Bruce has his own issues. When you fly into a rage, it can often feel like you are becoming a monster, or rather that you were a monster. The interesting thing about the Hulk and Bruce is that while Banner may often wrestle with feeling like the Hulk makes him a monster, often the Hulk does not express those same feelings. The Hulk actually sometimes seems to feel that Bruce is weak, so both view the other side of themselves as being the problematic side. In Bruce's case, similar to Ben Grimm, he also struggles with feeling as though he is too much of a monster for the world. This was beautifully shown in the film adaptation of The Avengers where in Age of Ultron, we actually see Bruce himself, not the Illuminati, banishing the Hulk from Earth. And his feelings towards himself in regards to his hatred of his monster-like form have often made Bruce Banner borderline suicidal. Number 2. Jessica Cruz Another pretty accurate representation of mental illness can be found within DC story of Jessica Cruz, a Green Lantern who finds herself plagued with debilitating anxiety. And I mean debilitating. Jessica suffers from severe anxiety, which results in her struggling to perform superhero duties due to feeling a lack of self-worth. Like that time she struggled to fight the Red Lanterns because she just felt she wasn't good enough. She also suffers from chest pains, palpitations, and panic attacks. The best thing about her character is not even that the comics show Jessica struggling with her illness, but working hard to repair and maintain her mental health. She uses breathing exercises, she tries to establish a routine to keep her mind away from negative thinking, exercising regularly, and cleaning with her sister. These are real world solutions to anxiety problems, and real techniques that even I have used to try and fight my own anxiety. The way this mental illness is discussed in the comics is just great, and it's so relatable. Also, Jessica seems to overcome her anxiety and perform great feats, which just makes the reader feel if Jessica can do it, then maybe they can too. Number 1. Deadpool Wade Wilson suffers from many, many illnesses. He seems to show signs of possible amnesia as well. He can never seem to get his origin story to quite stick, and has even expressed that he thought he knew it, but then he found out that he was wrong about it. 
making me wonder if his memories were tampered with or if maybe his head has just been blown off a few too many times. Deadpool has also shown signs of schizophrenia, substance abuse, hallucinations, and PTSD. We may not know how rough his childhood was, unlike his pal Wolverine who had maybe the worst childhood in comic book history, but we know his adult life certainly has not been easy, making it unsurprising that Deadpool is so erratic and often delusional. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this video informative and that you maybe learned something new about one of your favorite superheroes. I really love when comics humanize our heroes by giving them real world problems. We live in a world where so many people struggle with mental illness and never speak up. And highlighting mental illness, even if it sometimes is less than accurately depicted, helps us to get talking. Seriously, if you are suffering from a mental illness, talking about it is one of the best things you can do in regards to getting the help you need. Are there any superheroes you feel we still have missed? Let us know in the comments below, and maybe, just maybe, we'll give you a part three. Are there any illnesses or other world issues that you feel have not yet been covered in comics, but need to be? Shout it out in those comments. And while you are on your way down to the comments, remember to like, sub, ring that bell, and maybe give this video a share to, you know, spark some more talks on mental illness. As always, this is Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, reminding you to stay nerdy and to keep sparking those important conversations.